Good morning. Welcome to our Friday DeHart speech. For those of you who are here in Fishburne Theater and in the classrooms, um, please remember to silence your cell phones. And uh, if you're in the classrooms, close your computers, stay away from your homework for a few minutes to give your undivided attention to today's speaker. And here to introduce our speaker is Meet Greer. Will and I have grown up together for the past 14 years. Since before I can remember, he has always been influenced by different genres of music. His love started in 2010 hits such as We Are Young by Fun, Maps by Maroon 5, and Dynamite. As he grew up, his interests leaned more towards rap music surrounding artists like Future, Young Thug, and Drake. Through these different phases of his life, Will realized that music has a large influence on his quality of life. While Will's form of therapy has always involved music, my form of therapy is more art-based. Forms of therapy differ depending on the person. Here to talk more about alternative mental health therapies and the power of music is my good friend, Will Rakes. Mental health issues have been identified in people for thousands of years. Yet modern psychotherapy has existed for just over 100 years. For many years, mental health therapy involved false science, torture, and isolation. Procedures such as electric shock and solitary confinement in dirty and humane conditions, and even techniques such as trepanation, which is poking a hole in the skull to relieve pressure, were used with little success. That method had been used for over 5,000 years, yet has been discontinued. There was no proper anesthesia, so imagine the discomfort to the patient. Through the ages, mental health therapies have been considered the work of the devil or witchcraft, which resulted in confinement, torture, and executions. In the 1950s to the 1970s, psychotherapy coupled with medication became the most common way to treat psychiatric patients. There are many therapies that use the practice of different arts to have beneficial effects on pain, mental health, learning, and physical function. Many have successfully used psychotherapy, which is talking to a therapist on a regular basis to understand and resolve the problems experienced in their daily life. Psychotherapy is often accompanied by medication by psychiatrists to help with problems that talking won't resolve on its own. From trauma caused by family and work issues to depression, anxiety, phobias, addiction, PTSD, ADHD, and other issues, therapy can help a person with his or her quality of life by figuring out the root cause of the issues and can give the patients tools to help with day-to-day -day life. There are many types of therapies other than psychotherapy and medication therapy for the different problems a person may have. Strangely enough, because psychotherapy has been the most recognized therapy for many years, other non-conventional therapies have been placed into the term alternative therapy. However, many alternative therapies have worked very well with the patients that haven't responded to traditional psychotherapy. Music therapy dates back to 1500 BCE, according to the ancient Egyptian writing. Art therapy was created in the mid 1940s by artist Adrian Hill because many people in sanatoriums at the time suffered from tuberculosis, which had a lengthy recovery time, which confined many to home. Bibliotherapy, which is the use of reading and discussing books as a form of therapy has existed since 300 BC, but did not exist within the libraries until the 1970s. Journaling therapy did not begin being practiced until the mid 1970s, although many people have used journals to write down personal issues and problems for many years. There are many therapies and pra that practice the use of different arts to have beneficial effects on pain, mental health, learning, and physical function. Why do sports teams play music to get pumped before a game? How can dementia patients remember a childhood song word for word from 70 years ago, but not remember the name of their children or spouse? Why do people react with such emotion to a song or musical score? Music and music therapy has an amazing power. It can be a soundtrack to one's life. It can bring up memories, whether good or bad, and it can be a distraction from traumatizing, anxiety-causing events. Music therapy is an alternative therapy which uses various forms of music, singing, listening, and playing instruments to help improve one's mental health, physical coordination, and general well-being. There are multiple types of music therapy, including the Bonnie method of guided imagery and music, <coughs> neurologic music therapy, and the orf work. The Bonnie method consists of guided imagery and music when patients start with an image as described by their therapist, and music is used to guide their thoughts towards a solution to a problem that they are dealing with in their daily life. 
Neurologic music therapy is when scientists see how different types of music affect the brain. Some examples of types of music they use were classical or rock and roll, and then the scientists collect data on how the brain reacts to the type of music. More specifically, they look at how the music affects mood, attitude, and memories. The Orff Shorework approach to music uses singing, dancing, and percussion instruments to incorporate, incorporate an educational lesson to learn in a fun way. In one example, this approach worked well with the autistic children because it helped them focus more on the rhythm and beat and less on their thoughts. Orff Shorework is useful because it helps with developmental growth of the brain because repetition helps children retain the information. Because the students are actively engaged, this type of music helps distract them from their pain and anxiety. There was one study that proved that children at the ER having procedures, such as IVs inserted, showed less pain while listening to music than those who did not have music. The study included 42, 42 children ages three to 11, or children with music did not complain about the solution of the IV. <clears throat> Furthermore, the healthcare providers were more satisfied with the placement of the IV. Also, when patients have procedures that require scans in very tight and closed compartments, music is selected by the patient and is played to reduce the effects of claustrophobia. One, ca one case example of successful music therapy is Caleb. He's a patient with severe mental and physical disabilities, including being blind, quadriplegic, and epileptic. Music therapy was the only therapy that provided any kind of positive response. Caleb did not communicate verbally, yet music therapy allowed him to experience the power of music. There are many examples of music therapy being a breakthrough when other therapies had little positive or any real effect on the well-being of the patient. During my research, I conducted an interview with Tyler Gotzi, who started Five Points Music Sanctuary as a charitable organization that helps assist families with financial needs with music therapy. Although he has enjoyed music for many years, his interest in the power of sound came after his children, who were born deaf, received cochlear implants, and were able to hear the words, I love you, for the first time. Being hearing impaired himself, the interaction with his children was a very profound experience. When he was creating his vision for a music venue to celebrate sound and music, he needed a charitable organization to support through his nonprofit foundation. And music Fit Therapy was the perfect fit. His organization provides financial support for music therapy sessions to families and individuals who otherwise couldn't afford it since many health insurance plans don't cover alternative therapies such as music therapy. Five Points has been able to provide music therapy for people of all ages with both physical and mental disabilities. One example he mentioned was a woman who was quadriplegic and she had limited ability to communicate. She responded well to music therapy and eventually got up the courage to sing a song she had learned in front of a large crowd at a charitable event at Five Points. Tyra also set up a series of programs for parents with a music therapist whose office is located within the Five Points Sanctuary building. One of the programs had mothers, had, had mothers who had children with Down syndrome and didn't have a network of other families. Many felt isolated because other parents rarely included them in, because of their children's disabilities. The program provided group music therapy that allowed the children to meet, play music together, which raised self-esteem and confidence. The program also allowed mothers to develop a networking group of interaction outside of the therapy, which helps with the mental health of the moms who have their hands full with limited recreational options while caring for their disabled child. In another interview, I spoke with a singing instructor who said that many of our students get both mental and physical well-being from singing and practicing the proper way to sing. It takes breath control and one has to understand the different ways to use one's voice outside of simply speaking to a song. Singing builds self-confidence and when done in front of an audience, singing can bring up personal satisfaction both on stage and off. Singing can bring joy and can be a distraction from the problems of daily life. Singing lessons may not be a certified therapy and health insurance won't cover the lessons. But there are similarities to music therapy and there are certainly proof of increased confidence, well-being and satisfaction. I'm learning that therapy comes in many forms, whether approved by a medical board or the general's public views. Another alternative therapy is art therapy, which like Mead said, has been widely used to provide patients an escape and a way to express their emotions after a difficult situation or life event. Most mental health facilities have art programs to create a positive way for patients to express their thoughts. Since many have suffered from the, some sort of trauma or disability, it offers an escape and can provide healing because they are using their creativity to occupy their mind, as well as to express themselves in a nonverbal way. Since many have suffered from some sort of, oh, oh. since many have suffered from some sort of trauma or disability, it offers an escape and can provide healing because they are using their creativity to occupy their mind. Art therapy helps build self-esteem and individuals get satisfaction from the art they produce and there's often positive comments from other patients and staff members. Art therapy provides a safe environment where patients feel comfortable in a nurturing space. 
The types of art therapy depend on the age and interest of the patient. Art therapy includes a variety of types and materials such as collage, coloring, drawing, finger painting, painting, photography, and sculpting. In most circumstances, the process of creating the art is more important than the finished piece of art. Art therapy is used with children, adolescents, adults, older adults, groups, and families to assess and treat anxiety, depression, and other mental and emotional problems. Art therapy proved beneficial in a study in Holland that included women between the ages 18 to 65 who had an anxiety or panic disorder with moderate to severe anxiety symptoms. <clears throat> 47 women who completed the trial showed a reduction in their anxiety level and an increase in their quality of life. Treatment effects remained for ni around 90 days. The women showed an improvement in accepting their emotions and were able to keep their anxiety at a lower level. The results of the study proved that art therapy is an effective way to reduce symptoms of anxiety. In another art therapy study that took place in 2007, researchers conducted a study on the impact of art therapy on depression and fatigue in cancer patients. They found that the median score on the test for depression decreased from nine points to seven points after four art therapy sessions, and the average score on the fatigue test reduced from 5.7 to 4.1. In a third study, which took place in 2014, a professional a professor at Drexel University, Gerja Kamal, did a study that tested cortisol levels in participants before and after 45-minute art therapy session. Cortisol is a hormone produced by people's bodies when they are under stress. After the session, cortisol level, levels were lower in 75% of the participants. The last study I read about was conducted in 2010 when researchers at National Jewish Health in Denver tested the effects of seven weekly art therapy sessions on children with asthma. Living with asthma and the physical limitations had an effect on the mental health of the children. This was a randomized controlled study of 22 children which found that those who took art therapy sessions were more positive and had a greater quality of life. The next alternative therapy I studied was bibliotherapy, which is a type of therapy that focuses on reading books to improve mental health, teach life skills, and coping mechanisms. Sometimes bibliotherapy is done in a group setting, but it can also be done individually. It is also very convenient because it is a cost-effective treatment. There are two types of bibliotherapy that include prescriptive bibliotherapy and creative bibliotherapy. Prescriptive bibliotherapy involves managing one's own therapeutic needs using self-help books and manuals to address one's mental health needs. Self-help may be conducted with or without the guidance of a therapist. A cognitive behavioral therapist teaching someone deep breathing and emotion regulation techniques may provide that person with a practice workbook to use at home. For example, Books on Prescription is a program for, that some specialists recommend that gives reading recommendations and resources for mental health. Creative bibliotherapy uses imaginative literature, such as novels, short stories, poetry, plays, and biographies to improve one's mental state. By allowing the reader to relate to a certain character in the book and be involved while reading the story, the patient will potentially find relief through self-reflection and similar characteristics as a key figure in the book. Usually therapists give patients books that could genuinely open up emotions that are difficult for that individual to express, like sadness, anger, or fear. But bibliotherapy can be suggested to patients suffering from anxiety, depression, or other mood disorders. Those struggling with trauma or addiction, or those going through a grief, a divorce, or other relationship-related challenges. One study on bibliotherapy showed that bibliotherapy coupled with psychotherapy was an effective treatment for depression. The study consisted of 60 and older adults diagnosed with depression. They found that both were effective in reducing the patient's depression. depression. Bibliotherapy was also the focus of a study that consisted of PTSD and heart disease patients. The case group represented those with many noticeable problems. The control group represented those that were similar in age and gender, but different in severity of problems. Poetry therapy was conducted through four or 45 minute sessions in a week for the case group. The therapy had positive effects on both groups and is recommended in remedial programs as well as nurse training. Lastly, there was also a study done at a psychiatric ward for older adults. The research aimed to identify the experiences of participants in a reading group. There were 10 one-hour group sessions of 15 participants. Those who were interviewed followed, following the session felt empathy, confidence, and identity. Reading out loud increased confidence and a sense of self-identity in the patients. Have you ever noticed that many writers are introverts and rarely make public appearances? The last alternative therapy is journal therapy, which is writing therapy that involves prompts to help the writer find answers to feel better about learning how to express thoughts that are difficult to express one-on-one. -on -one. Journaling therapy can help increase one's mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being by allowing people to explore a negative situation 
and possibly find something positive to write about after listening to the therapist's opinion on the issues. Many psychotherapists include journaling therapy in their work with the patients, and it can give them insight into their patients' issues. Writing therapy can help those who are dealing with post-traumatic stress, anxiety, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, and often those that have suffered a loss of a loved one. People with symptoms such as chronic illness, substance abuse, eating disorders, relationship issues, poor communication skills, and low self-esteem have also shown improvement through journal therapy. Again, many people have difficulties with verbal expression of how traumatic events have affected them, so writing down painful thoughts can be very helpful. In one study that used cognitive behavioral writing therapy for children with PTSD, therapists created writing assignments in person with the children. A pilot study of the therapy found an obvious decrease in PTSD and symptoms of depression, in addition to a, a decrease in internalizing and externalizing behavior problems. During a three-month study, patients who suffered from multiple conditions, including depression and anxiety, were asked to write online for 15 minutes for three days a week. Over a three-month period, the patients showed a greater sense of well-being and a drop in depressive symptoms after 30 days. The length of their well-being continued to improve over that period of time. New Zealand, there was a study on 49 adults that found that who, who wrote for 20 minutes about an upsetting event recovered quicker after a biopsy than the patients who just wrote about daily activities. Another similar study involving college students showed that students who wrote about stressful events were less likely to develop an illness. Students who wrote about topics such as their dorm room in college did not seem to benefit from the writing exercise. It showed that writing to release emotions was much more therapeutic than writing about what they see around them in a room. In conclusion, not all medicine is created in laboratories and not all mental health therapies require traditional therapists and medication. More and more people are using apps, online programs, and group therapy than ever, especially since the beginning of COVID. Plus, since the start of COVID, mental health providers have been overwhelmed with old and new patients suffering from isolation and oppression from being at home and not being able to see loved ones, as well as people with anxiety and stress from work-related issues such as business closures, downsizing, and other uncertainties. Like any business, the psychotherapists and counselors cannot keep up with the amount of people suffering with mental health issues. So alternative therapies have seen an increase in popularity in recent years. When people are isolated due to the pandemic, it seems natural to read more, take up an instrument, paint or draw, or write about something. However, many fall into depression and can't get an appointment with a psychotherapist right away or at all. Alternative therapies allow people to schedule time for well-being, which is often neglected. It could help more people who seek therapy find something that helps. Hopefully soon, alternative therapies will be more widely accepted by health insurance companies and will actually lower healthcare costs so it will be more accessible. Over the last 100 years, the United States has made amazing progress in medical technologies, improvement in cancer treatments, cures for many diseases, and advances in surgical procedures and overall cleanliness of hospitals. Unfortunately, the progress made in the field of mental health has been falling behind due to lack of funding, awareness, and simply lack of understanding about the inner workings of the brain. Whether using conventional or alternative therapy, we have a relatively short life. And in my opinion, no one should ever be ashamed to ask for help with feeling better than yesterday. What I've learned from experience is that many things we do in our daily lives could be considered therapy. If you're bored from listening to my speech and dozed off, perhaps you could consider that sleep therapy.